Greetings, energetic viewers, and welcome to Healthy Living. Today on our show, we are honored to introduce the esteemed T. Colin Campbell, Ph.D., a pioneer of nutritional research, a professor emeritus of nutritional biochemistry at Cornell University in the United States, Dr. Campbell has spent over 40 years researching, teaching, and developing diets to optimize nutrition and health. Dr. Campbell received his master's degree and Ph.D. from Cornell and served as a research associate at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT. He has served on several grant review panels of multiple funding agencies, lectured extensively, and has authored more than 300 research papers. His original research, both in laboratory experiments and in large-scale human studies, has brought him recognition as recipients of several awards, both in research and citizenship. Dr. Campbell is also the project director of the China Oxford Cornell Diet and Health Project, which eventually became known as the China Study, considered the most comprehensive study on the role of diet, disease, and health to have ever been conducted. In 2004, he and his son Tom co-authored the book, The China Study, which summarized his career's worth of research on nutrition, which concludes that a pure vegan diet is the most optimal for health. Dr. Campbell continues to actively participate in the development of national and international nutrition policy. Today's show is the first of a two-part series on healthy living featuring Dr. T. Colin Campbell and his research findings on the benefits of a plant-based diet. My personal beginning uh, was from the dairy farm. I was milking cows, typical American boy, I suppose. And um, I sort of superficially thought the American diet was the best diet there was. Uh, and then I went to graduate school at Cornell University and did my doctoral dissertation along those same lines. Uh, in many ways, uh, it was a dissertation research that was intended to promote the consumption of animal-based foods, dairy, meat, eggs, milk, and uh, it was specifically focused on protein in the early 60s, middle 60s. I had an opportunity to work in the Philippines with uh, a rather distinguished man uh, who had been in the business a long time in nutrition. Um, And so he and I were in the Philippines arranging for setting up a nationwide program or of feeding malnourished children. And in those days, uh, the view was that these children who are malnourished in poor countries are, nutritionally speaking, either deficient in one of two things. Either they don't get enough calories or they don't get enough protein. I learned, uh, actually, on the golf course, playing golf one day uh, from my uh, Philippine counterpart, a medical doctor, that children who are age four and under sometimes were susceptible to getting liver cancer, which was very unusual because liver cancer tends to occur in middle to older age people. And I started asking around and learned that these children who were likely getting liver cancer were from families who were the quote-unquote best fed. They were consuming the most protein. Typical Western diet, they were the richer families. At about this time, Dr. Campbell found a study from India also showing a connection between consuming higher levels of animal proteins and liver cancer. When he returned to the United States, he obtained funding from the National Institutes of Health for a 27-year study that focused on the correlation between protein consumption and cancer development. We also did some work to show the protein we were using was animal-based. It was the main protein of cow's milk. And that made it really kind of tricky and kind of difficult for me. I'm coming from the dairy farm. Right, right. And here the protein of cow's milk is a problem. Uh, So then we compared it with a couple of plant proteins. Plant proteins didn't do that. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden it was pointing away to animal-based protein. Could be a problem, but maybe plant protein would not be. When Healthy Living returns, we will learn about the China study, which shows how high cancer and disease rates are tied to consuming animal foods. Please keep your dial tuned here to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Healthy Living on Supreme Master Television, featuring renowned author of the China study, Dr. T. Colin Campbell. 
In the 1980s, Dr. Campbell led the China study, the most comprehensive research project on the role of diet and disease. First, I should tell you what the China study is. Um, the Chinese in the 1970s had established that cancer was very common in some areas of China and not in others. There are big differences. And so they surveyed uh, how much cancer existed for about two dozen different kinds of cancers uh, all across China. They published those results in the early 1980s. And so because of these big differences, and also because the people in these different regions tended to live in the same places most of their lives, mm -hmm. it was a perfect setting to do a study, to go there and find out what was it that accounted for these really very different rates. And so we organized a study uh, with joint funding from China, the United States, and Great Britain, and Cornell University, University of Oxford, and two Chinese government academies were the lead institutions. And so we, we did this study to measure as many things as we could because at that time I had certain preconceived notions about what might be causing cancer. I had been working in the field for at least 20 years before that. And uh, one that I had was that cancer was the result of the multiple factors in food kind of working together. And the second view that I had come to know was that animal protein, when it was tested experimentally, actually can enhance the growth of cancer. And so those two ideas, the multiplicity of effects together with the idea that animal protein, maybe animal foods, were a problem. So we set the study up to measure as many things we could. Collected blood samples, urine samples, food samples, asked questions, and then just amassed a really large amount of information. And from that data set, then we could go back and sort of evaluate, investigate, analyze what this information was telling us. And uh, it was quite remarkable because in that area of China, mostly rural China, uh, they don't eat much in the way of animal-based foods. And so I didn't really expect to see much effect, to be honest about it. But in fact, when you started looking at this mountains and mountains of data, it became quite clear to me that even the introduction of reasonably small amounts of animal food in the diet began to create problems, mm -hmm. not just for cancer, but also for heart disease and other diseases. And that coincided with what we had been learning in the laboratory. The team gathered information from residents of 130 villages where protein from animal products ranged from 0% to 20%, with the average being 10%, a much smaller percentage than in the U.S., where the average person gets 75% of their protein from animal products. And yet, even at these smaller percentages, they could identify a correlation between consuming more animal-based foods and higher rates of cancer and other deadly diseases. And so what we found was that as soon as people start to go from the counties where there's no animal-based foods up to the level where there is some, mm -hmm. that's when you start to see blood cholesterol levels come up. You start to see cancer start to appear mm -hmm. and increase, start to see heart disease more. Mm -hmm. You start to see the kind of diseases we see in the West. And that was really quite striking. That observation, though, from the China study, it, standing alone, mm -hmm. just standing alone, in a scientific sense, doesn't necessarily uh, say a lot. I mean, it's certainly suggestive. But what made that study, what made that observation important was when you compare it with our laboratory work, when you compare it with the work of other people, mm -hmm. you know, other kinds of studies, then it becomes really significant. What evidence is there that a whole food, plant-based diet can actually reverse chronic disease? Well, we had acquired information that uh, using certain kinds of nutrients characteristic of animal or plant food that we could actually reverse cancer or at least control it in an experimental setting. Uh, then I came to know Dr. Coldwell Esselstyn, Jr. at the Cleveland Clinic, who uh, had done something very similar with people. And now he's published a book himself uh, just in February on reversing heart disease. And what he was able to achieve was something truly remarkable. He was taking seriously ill people with heart disease and actually just bringing the disease under control. He actually calls it cure. And what he, what he ended up doing was very similar to another man by the name of Dr. Dean Ornish. Uh, the evidence now shows that we can reverse or at least control heart disease.
there's quite a lot of evidence now beginning to emerge that we can control even cancer. Experimentally, we could do that. We got to a point where we could turn on and turn off cancer development just by giving animal protein, for example, or taking it away or replacing it with plant protein. It's quite remarkable. Amazing. We do have some human studies now from other laboratories, other, other researchers who are uh, basically demonstrating that uh, cancer can be controlled to some extent. His extensive studies brought about Dr. Campbell's conclusion that an animal-free diet would be most beneficial to our well-being. I've just come to a, a very different worldview. Uh, it's a worldview that is based on holistic ideas, and uh, so I finally got to the place where I was saying that the closer we get to a plant-based diet, you know, the healthier we're going to be. You've been watching Healthy Living, airing every Monday on Supreme Master Television. Please tune in next week for part two of our program featuring Dr. T. Colin Campbell and his discussion on how plant-based diets protect and reverse disease. Science and Spirituality is up next right after Noteworthy News. May your life be filled with optimal health, happiness, and peace. <laughs>